What's up guys, War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to go over the patch notes from the dev live stream. Um, everything that was from the the fourth and today there's a lot of notes here so we're going to try to go over the most important things and just kind of break some things down and just pick out what i think is the most impactful for uh the upcoming season two the season of blood for diablo and really hope that a lot of these changes are going to bring things back so with that out of the way let's go ahead and break down 1.2.0 which is coming on the 17th which is the official patch notes coming in so just looking at the codex here the new unique um items legendary aspects and glyphs we're going to check out and we're just going to kind of just go through the rest of these the bug fixes and battle passes we're really not going to take a look at but everything else we should be good so let's kind of break this down i'm going to try not to make the video too long so i wish there was a lot more pictures with these but so unique items the dawning sky when you take damage so okay so they updated a lot of these and just made a lot of good changes i'm hoping so blood moon breaches are these new these are all new. So Tezit of the Dawning Sky. I wish there was more pictures because I really don't want to like break down a lot of these. Um, when you gain Berserking, already Berserking, you have 40 to 60% chance to become enraged. Uh, the Dawning Sky, when you take damage from non-physical types, you gain a maximum res. That's cool. Blood Moon Breaches. These are pants. Your minions have a chance to curse enemies. They take 70% multiplicative damage, increased overpower damage from you. That's really nice uh blood or blood blue rose which is a ring damaging an enemy is a 30 percent chance to be forming an exploding ice spike that's kind of cool god slayer crown when you stun freeze or immobilize an enemy or a boss it pulls in nearby enemies and you deal increased damage that's kind of cool flicker step we already saw this one this is going to be a huge huge unique um, I think this is probably going to be one of the most used ones, especially for a lot of ultimates and some stuff that may have or may or has not been used before. So I think this is really going to be really, really good. To Bolt's Will, 20 to 40% increased damage for Unstoppable. That's cool. I like that. Uh, there's a Signet here. Your damage over time effects have up to a 50% chance to erupt. So I see even small stuff like this, I don't think is going to be super impactful to dot builds, but we'll see. Soul Brand, your healing potion no longer heals instantly, instead grants a barrier. Interesting. And you have damage reduction increase. Lord Talisman, after you spend 300 of your primary resource, your next core skill is guaranteed to overpower, and your critical strikes that overpower do increase damage. Man, they are really pushing overpower builds. Interesting. Now, the legendary aspects, um, we're not going to really go into too much on these guys. Um, if you want to check out these ones, these are just aspects that they've just kind of had in the game. Or are these new ones? Yeah, these are new ones. So we're not going to go over those ones, but it looks like there's some like about seven or eight, nine of these. The Paragon Glyphs, they added two for each class. You got Twister, which does increase Dust Devil. They really want to push other skills that aren't really used a whole lot, like Dust Devil. The Earthquake increases um stuff like this is really cool but again i don't know if these small increases are going to be good just for one skill that really isn't even used that much so uh druid has electrocution your lightning bolts and dancing bolts deal more damage um and then you have earth skills gain even more critical strike damage tectonic is going to be huge for uh werebear builds necromancer you have exhumination exhum exhumanate exhumanitation <laughs> Uh, your corpse skills deal increased damage, and then you get damage reduction. That's nice. Desecration. Oh, so you make a desecration ground, and you deal more damage, and then you take increase or you deal more shadow damage while you're standing in it. It's kind of kind of cool, I guess. Explosive. We already saw this. Night Stalker entering stealth reduces the cooldown of shadow imbuement. Hmm. Shadow imbuement's already strong. That's kind of cool. Sork, we got, we already saw the stalagmite, and then we got evocation here for even more conjuration. Wow, they're pushing that, huh? It's because nobody used conjuration skills because they all suck, but that's besides the point. So my man's fitting to be here for a while. Yeah, we're going to try to just like go through this and maybe make it like close to like 15, 20 minutes for the video. I don't want to go into too much in depth here. I just kind of want to like skim it and just pick out things. Uh, gameplay updates, accessibility. We already know about a lot of this. So you can now mark. You got the stash tab filters. 
um, the aspects that kind of pair up next to each other, the same names. Dungeons that have active whispers with them will now be displayed. That's really cool. Streamer mode, additional option for hiding combat text. This is the probably the best one out of these quality of lice. If you don't want all that extra stuff on your screen, that's really nice. Auto run, I guess is cool. Um, announcement for the world bosses, all that stuff is cool. New icons on the map for hell tides. This makes it really, really nice when you don't have to go to, to three or four different defensive or armor type boxes just to find the chat or the helmet um you can just go straight to that one now this does not mean that you will be able to have the mystery chest highlighted but we have the maps for those just so that's kind of there two additional character slots totaling 12 that's good because we have a lot of characters items enchant cost is is now determined bait by coefficient of base item power and item type instead of the item sell value okay so and then it scales all right so let's take a look as an example when enchanting a rare ancestral wand with 750 base item power prior to season blood the first chant was this and then it went up like crazy when enchanting the same item during season blood season of blood and beyond the first is 64 then it doubled wait so the first one's 64 then it doubles then it goes up another 60 that's the math when enchanting a legendary one with 800 base ip prior to season the first enchant was this and now the first enchant is half that additionally imprinting adding sockets or upgrading will no longer increase the enchant cost wow Enchant being determined by sell value encourages players to reroll a rare item before upgrading. Yep. I don't know. I mean, I guess this is cheaper, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to test one and upgrade it like 10 times and see what we're at after 10 rerolls. We already know about the gem stuff. The overall drop rate of of elixirs has been reduced. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's to me based on the item power. So really what's happening is, is that you're penalized for having a better item to reroll. So like, even if you had one that's 750 base, like what's it going to cost on your 10th reroll? Because what they did was they took this, they doubled it, and now the third enchant, they just added 64 back to 128. So now is on the fourth roll, are we doubling again? And then on the fifth roll, we take whatever that number is and then add back 64 again? I doubt that. I mean, it just seems like the enchanting is still going to cost a crap ton. And remember, the only gold increase that they actually added was from Tree of Whispers. So the overall gold that you're gaining is only increased in Tree of Whispers, not from doing any other content. But we'll see. Uh, Whisper Caches, they have the increased range. So now you got, when you open something, you got the new ranges. This is really nice. Leveling scaling examples. Okay. So this is cool. This is really nice. Post level 100 all the way up to 925. I like that. Yeah. The acquisition rate of Forgotten Souls from salvaging has been adjusted. Salvaging is sacred has a 5% chance to grant. Ancestral is 10. Two handed weapons can grant up to two. Oh, so they actually brought Forgotten Souls back to it. <laughs> I mean, I got all mine from Helltide, so I didn't really care, but... It did suck that whenever you salvaged a sacred or ancestral, you no longer got Forgotten Souls, so it's good that that's back. Um, they did change the loot adjustments. We already knew about that, which is really good. Wait, wait, wait. Gold drop rates have also been increased. Oh, okay. So they did. So not only did they increase a huge bonus in Tree of Whispers, but now we have increased gold drop rates in each of the different tiers to accommodate. So maybe... 
the actual rerolls of these probably won't be too bad if you're just like farming in world tier four for crazy amounts of gold interesting dungeons we already know about the teleportation going straight in that's good the nightmare sigils will now be rewarded upon completion and only after completing the final boss monsters um will spawn closer to the entrance that's cool yeah i mean that's that's kicked up for sure direct damage effects uh okay backstabbers yep we we saw the changes to those uh we just saw the changes to pikachu the crit potion breakers resistance breakers so they kind of just scaled these numbers back um a little bit it looks like that's kind of nice glyph experience has increased across the board with a significant increase in earlier tiers overall glyph experience is 19 percent more this is really good because if you were doing a nightmare dungeon level 50 it would take you 15 runs of those to get a brand new glyph from level 1 to level 15. it would take 15 of them um and that's and that's at level 50. Uh, i took 15 because it's about 1200 Eh, roughly 1300 exp to take a glyph from level 1 to level 15 and you were roughly on a level 50 you were roughly getting around about 93 exp per run so i take that back it probably isn't 15 it's probably more like 18 or 19 runs but which was still wasn't too bad but now with this increase it's probably going to be around the 15 or 16 so it's not too bad uh the visual updates we already know the changes on those are really nice um, end game activities the legion events have been um, the timers are all increased and you get more rewards we saw that um, world bosses we saw the change to this with the timers which is really cool so the legion events as well as the world bosses spawn more general silent chests can now spawn in areas where hell tides active that's really cool um, that's really nice the sigil levels being determined by the world tier is actually pretty good um, whisper caches now reward more significant gold and gem fragments which is really nice hell tides is actually one of my favorite things to actually do in diablo 4 i actually really enjoy that running with my team and just going all the mount buffs we already know are awesome especially for me because the mount does not work for me and i think that's just me specifically and nobody else but i'm glad they make those changes same thing with the town adjustments all the increase to the vendors being all over the place as well as multiple stashes it's not different stashes it's the same stash but you won't have to run to just one location you have multiple locations to actually go deal with your inventory all right monsters all monsters across the game have been rebalanced based on all the changes level scaling in the open world has been adjusted so it's 1 to 50 for 1 and 2 up to 70 for tier 3 and then 75 to 100 for tier 4 okay i like those bases so uh they increased okay so they made some changes to the explosion and how some of these monsters work so that's kind of nice um but i like the the scaling i hope that really balances some things out we'll see the experience update from their last one on the force said 40 percent more exp uh so we'll see because they want people to hit level 100 so i don't know how good this is going to be let's uh let's take a look here examples of experience gained from monsters before any other bonuses one to 50 is unchanged so your leveling experience will be slightly easier because of the buffs to some things um 55 previous it was 370 now you're getting 420 425 per monster at level 70 is 445 and now you're getting 700 yo storms in with the follow i appreciate it man welcome welcome and level 90 it was 545 and now it's 850 per monster and then the experience rewards for completing whispers grim favors and hell tides three wow this th these are huge bonuses and then rewards have been increased wow wow okay now these bonuses here are before any other bonuses so per monster like these are huge bonuses here they said 40 percent faster because they want more people to get to 100. i still think that it was probably over 74 percent of players still didn't get past 50 which is still crazy individual whisper completion this is good the increases here that's nice 
Especially now that we're going to farm them to fight bosses. Miscellaneous. Uh, Necromancer minions and druid companions are, mar are now much, lo much less likely to target invulnerable enemies. See, this is what I mean by the AI aspect of the minions in particular. Not even the companions. More so the minions. Because it makes playing the minion build really difficult in large mobs. Uh, effects that guarantee overpower will be consumed. Okay. Levels at which players will receive the priority quest for unlocking the next one. Oh, okay. So you go up to 48 and 68. Okay. I like that. So rewards for completing side quests have been improved. Nobody does side quests. Increased field crystals. Slightly increased um, orbs or leather. And then they contain an item. Okay. Great. Um, sweet. Increased mon monster density on these. I mean, that's kind of nice. Increased speed of progression on these. That's kind of nice, too. All right. Um, so, where are we at? Balance updates? God, these are a lot. Holy crap, man. We ain't even got... I'm not doing battle pass or bug fixes, so we're just looking at balance and class balancing. So, let's see. It'll probably be like a 20-minute video, guys. It's not too bad. Um... So let's see, balance updates, unique items, new affixes. We just checked this stuff out, right? New affixes and then the affixes and slot that have been replaced. I think these are good. Again, we're just going to have to really test them. Resistances, we kind of already talked about this, how if you have 20% um, and 20% it goes to 40%. Um, so let's take a look at stuff here. So they add now, resistant boosting elixirs now increase it. Uh, world tiers three and four now apply a negative 25 and 50 percent penalty to all resistances and all elements instead of a multiplier okay single resistance affixes roll on pants single resistances affix now contribute to a maximum value of plus 35 percent for a fully upgraded normal item 48 and 65 respectively for your ancestrals so if you have a resistance value and you have it maxed and you level up an ancestral item to five it'll be plus 65 interesting all resistance affixes now give a maximum value of plus nine percent for a fully upgraded normal item and so on okay so here we go so a max roll so you got plus 16 percent on all res and then depending on what your individual single resistance is, it can be increased. So yeah, yeah, this is just like, yeah, D2R. Yeah, you're right. Rings, same thing, but that this is 10% instead of 13, or 16. So if you have max rings, two of those, that's 20 and a max amulet, that is 36% to all reses already. That's not too bad when your max is 70. That's almost, that's half. So that's not bad. That's not bad. And then resistance is on your... Oh, wait. No, no. So I'm sorry. Rings is 10. You have two of those. That's 20. And then your amulet is 24. So you got 44% out of your 70. That's not bad. Can you be negative? Well, they have a base negative. So in world tiers 3 and 4... So in World Tier 4, you have a minus 50 penalty to your resistances. So if you're minus 50 and you have two max rings at 10 and you have a max amulet, that's only 44. So you're actually negative 6%. But that's before anything else. Because single resistance affix, affixes now contribute for a fully upgraded item. So like if you had a pants and you had plus 65% on your pants to like cold, right? And you're at minus 50. So you're plus 15% plus the 44. So that puts you to 60. And that's just with pants. So if you have at least one like on every gear piece, as an example, then yeah, it's very easy to get to 70 or just getting whatever the buffs are from the Paragon board. So we're going to have to really see what this does. But don't forget, you also have all of your 
gems, remember? So if you have your max gems, that's 30% you put into your gear. And that's five pieces. So, I mean, that's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Remember, the all resists on diamonds are good too. Even 5% on diamonds, you have five of those, that's 25% more. So we'll uh, we'll see. The adjustments to the elixirs, magic resist. Okay. So it's definitely it's definitely possible. You're really just gonna have to tune your gear. And then we got some changes to the armor here, which is gonna be armor value. Yep. So disobedience has been increased because it only affects physical damage as opposed to all the resistances. This is good. Same thing with Snowville, and then the armor contribution here. So these are good changes to the armor considering the changes to resistances. Um, the evade movement affix during increases now upgrades. So if you have plus one, it goes to two and so on. That's good. Damage bucket. So we know the overpower changes. Here we go. We got to look at these. So we already saw the vulnerability changes as well as the crit strike. So the overpower now always deals up to 50 times multiplicative increased damage based on your current life percentage overpower attacks gain two percent damage per one percent of your base life all overpower damage affixes have been increased overpower damage glyphs and, and nodes have been increased so they're really pushing overpower chat said to read the damage bucket updates builds that utilize crit strike damage and vulnerable damage have been disproportionately powerful this is because the stats were previously calculated as part of separate damage buckets that were fully multiplicative when combined with other damage bonuses. In order to promote greater build diversity, we are changing how critical strike vulnerability and overpower damage is calculated. These damage types will now have a baseline multiplicative bonus in addition. This change represents the overall decrease in damage output, so we are adjusting mount monster scaling to ensure that the class builds are still as powerful as before. So they're nerfing it and making things better, but then nerfing monsters at the same time, which in turn should make us feel even more powerful with other builds. So I guess that's good. Uh, the effects of death defense passive. Yep, on the minions, we already checked that out. So now minions will always have these things. That's nice. Okay, so we got um, battle pass updates we don't care about. And then there's some bug fixes. So let's take a look. How much did they nerf in all of this? How bad is it? Class balances. So Barbarian. Enhanced Bash. Max life. Damage increased. Damage bonus increased. So it looks like they're doing a lot of buffs across the board. James, what's up, dude? Welcome back. No worries, man. We just finished the dev stream uh, and now we're checking out the patch notes and we're just making a video about it. So it's not too bad. So Fortify has been all changed to max life. So this is good. Maximum damage, damage bonus from Supreme Wrath is capped. Storms in Season 2 sounds way better than I was expecting. Yes, first time chat. Appreciate you, brother. Um, it, it's a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction. Attack speed increased. So it looks like they're doing a bunch of buffs. Passive event increased, increased, damage increased, changed by um, increase. So just by skimming, it looks like they're just doing a lot of buffs across the board. Then, of course, we know the change to Ancestral Force. Earth Strike, weapon swap requirement from 10 to 8. That's kind of nice. Um, and then they changed some things on the uniques. Okay, so not too bad. It looks like I'm just I'm just skimming it, guys, because I just the general it looks like the general consensus of all this is just buffs. It looks like they're just buffing things across the board is what it looks like. Yep, max life overpower damage has been increased. Rank of wolves have been increased. OK, yeah, so it looks like they're just giving a lot of buffs to everything. So this is good. However, the buffs are really just number increases, which is a thing. Um, and then some small changes to a lot of these skills here. Um, but you know what? I can't knock it because they want us to feel much more powerful, which is something they stated six days ago. So 
the fact that every single class here is getting buffs whether it's buffed to the numbers even if it's by two to three to five percent or damage or damage reduction increases um like shadow clone damage affix increased by 150 percent like these things are just better to make us feel more powerful um and with the small but or nerf to the monsters like we should feel more powerful overall and then we're gonna add like you said the additional season two powers from the vampiric powers on top of that so we're not gonna go through every single class here but i'm just it just kind of looks like they're buffing everything which is just it warms my heart because when i look at a game like diablo 3 and once you get your class sets and you just kind of tune things just slightly you're just smashing all the monsters poe the same thing once you get your build going and you get into the end game and you're able to just slaughter monsters upon maps on maps on maps it just makes the game feel so much more fun and i know that a big thing for them is you know time on the platform because that's what they want they want their their numbers for their recorded monthly users but I'm telling you, in an ARPG where we're smashing monsters, even in an open world concept, if we feel more powerful, we are going to have more fun. We are going to have more fun if we feel more powerful and we're able just to slaughter monsters. Now, this is not saying that we shouldn't have a challenge and things should there shouldn't be content that should be hard because there should be. But the general game shouldn't be too hard. The end game content is where we need to have a significant challenge um, as opposed to just like, hey, it's taken me 25 hours to get, you know, through this campaign, you know, so. But it looks like there's a lot of good buffs here and a lot of really good changes. So I'm going to make sure to link this down in the description, guys, for those who haven't seen it. Um, but the patch notes, a lot of good things coming. It's a lot to digest. Um, the biggest things and biggest takeaways for me are going, or what I'm really curious about is not even necessarily the unique changes or the new ones. It's more so the resistance system as well as damage buckets are probably the two biggest things for me. Um, those are probably the two biggest things. Class balancing, it looked like everything is just getting a buff and small changes to some of the legendary aspects and possibly some of the skills those are going to be minor in comparison to how the resistance system and the damage buckets are going to play out because those two things are really going to affect our gameplay in the game so really curious to test all of this stuff so yeah i'll leave a link to this down in the description below guys um, make sure to like the video comment down below tell me what you guys think about the patch notes and all of these changes i really want your guys' thoughts and uh get a discussion going for our community here um, but i really do appreciate it make sure to subscribe guys and as always stay gaming i'll catch you guys in the next one peace